Okay, we're back here live inside theCUBE. This is siliconangle.com, exclusive coverage of HP Discover 2012 in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, and we're here to extract the signal from the noise about what's happening around HP, uh, extracting the news, the analysis, and the guests here. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at wikibon.org, number one in real time research. Check out the, uh, the wiki. We just uh, uh, produced a manifesto on software-led infrastructure, another one on software-led storage. Uh, we got folks analyzing the yesterday's HP announcements in the context of our framework for software-led storage, so, so take a look at that, chime in, hit edit. Love to have your feedback. Hit us up on Twitter, I'm at D Vellante, he's at Furrier. Send us questions and, uh, and we'll get them in. And we're here with Sam Rutledge, who is with Softcat, a uh, really interesting company, uh, Sam. Uh, met yesterday, uh, yep. love to have Hi. you on. Thank you very much for, to be for coming here. on. Good to see you. Softcat is kind of a reseller turned service provider. Um, That's about right. And uh, I know you guys have said, hey, we're proud to the fact that we're a reseller. A lot of people hide yeah. from that. And, Absolutely. Uh, not yeah. us. We, we, that's we, where, we love being a reseller. where the rubber meets the road, baby. Exactly. We <laughs> love being a reseller. We love getting out there and putting this stuff in for customers, but increasingly people want to consume it as a service. So it would be silly of us not to, not to react to that and build that part of our business also. You'd be very proactive there. I mean, a lot of the folks in the channel are looking at cloud, kind of scratching their heads, trying to figure out what to do with it, maybe putting forth some consulting services yep. um, that whose ultimate out outcome is don't, don't go to the cloud. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But you guys, well, I, guess, I guess the <laughs> outcome what is what they don't yeah. have to sell, right? <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> so you're taking a different approach, being very aggressive there. So talk yep. about that and, and how's it going? So I, I don't know whether it's necessarily being, being really aggressive. What we're trying to do is come up with options for customers. So you know, we, we see some customers wanting to own and run it and keep hold of their data and you know, not let it get away from them. We see com some customers wanting to focus less and less on infrastructure and more and more on applications and the services that they, they deliver to the business. And you know, I guess we, we, we want to be all things to all people in that space. The, mm -hmm. the Burger King, if you like, of cloud. Have it your way. Have it on-premise, have it off-premise. We'll run it for you. Um, so you know, it's not. This isn't a pivot for our business. This isn't us changing and saying we're going to stop being a traditional reseller or a traditional sol solutions provider. We love that stuff. This is about us presenting options for our customers and putting an arm around them and helping them get down that route if it's appropriate for their business. It's as simple as that, really. So how does that option manifest itself if it is something like cloud? Are you deploying your own cloud? You just got a multiple. You have a menu of clouds you can choose from. Can I go to? Amazon through you, talk about that a little bit. So at the minute it's predominantly infrastructure as a service, mm -hmm. so um, we, we use the, the platform obviously based on HP technology um, to deliver infrastructure as a service and we find customers using that for disaster recovery, that was probably the first use case. We find customers outsourcing particular applications to us that they, they find ugly and find a, a, a problem to manage internally and we're start, starting to see customers take infrastructure as a service for everything. Just get get rid of their own infrastructure and transition, you know, it takes a little while, everything into our, our, our platform. Um, so it's kind of a uh, an infrastructure platform that we can deliver to customers in, oh, so in those different ways, really. So, so it's the Softcat Cloud? Yeah, Cloud Softcat, we call it. Cloud Other Softcat, so, okay, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little dyslexic. No, that's fine, <laughs> don't worry. Amazon had its big reInvent conference last yeah. week. We're seeing okay. Amazon get much, much more aggressive uh, in the enterprise. Yeah. We were at Oracle Open World, Amazon was there with the booth, Absolutely. they were trolling around VMworld, sure. so we're seeing them much, much more. What are your clients uh, saying about about that? Are they is there visibility there? Are they are they looking to go there? What what are your what's your advice specifically with respect to you know something like Amazon? Okay, so you know it's interesting that you know with the Amazon thing and you know there are other organizations getting on for that size of scale, although right. not quite there in the cloud space. Um, and you know, don't get me wrong, that's fantastic, and we're never going to compete with Amazon at the at the the scale that they that they work at, but. One thing that our customers find is that they, they, want, they want a helping hand. You know, they want someone to put their arm around them and, and lead them on this journey. Because you know, if you're a, a mid-sized organization, you, know, you can't afford to have cloud architects and cloud propositions guys just sitting around theorizing about this stuff. You, you, need, to, you need to think about the way that you're doing with, with the resource that you've got today. And to architect your applications, to use something like Amazon Cloud, you know, look at what Netflix have done with the Chaos Monkey and all their other monkeys that run around yeah. sorting out their software. Yeah. I mean, that, that's fascinating. That's, that's using stuff in a different way. For our customers with their traditional on-premise applications, getting into a, a, new, a new world, 
they want to go there, they want to get there slowly they want somebody that they can phone up you know i firmly believe that that there's a service angle in cloud you know a customer service angle as much as anything uh, an opportunity for an organization like ours who knows their customers really well is the friendly face of it hopefully for them um, who knows infrastructure who knows their infrastructure specifically and can help them with that 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 gentle migration perhaps how about the sla issue i mean amazon uh, last week said we've John, I'm sure you heard this too. We've never lost a piece of business due to an SLA. And now I'm saying, well, of course you have. <laughs> I have so many customers have said, I'll never put this data yeah. in the Amazon cloud. They just don't know about it. But, but you didn't bring that up, which I, I was in, 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 intriguing to me. Uh, but is that a point on, on customers' mind? In other words, I always describe the Amazon SLA as, as Fluid. we'll do our best. Yeah. And if we don't, just send us an email. And we'll get back yeah. to you. Now, that's, there's nothing wrong with that if you're a Rails developer. Yeah, absolutely. You know? That's yeah, cool. Um, uh, or you know, yeah, if you're using that platform to, to develop your application and then you're maybe going to think about bringing it back in-house. I mean, there's an argument that in theory, you know, the scale should give them that level of availability that they can't afford to have themselves on premise. But you know, I guess the reality is, is, is slightly different. Um, you know, I think customers are realistic. You know, they understand that this stuff is complicated and that it's going to go down, it's going to stop working. Even, even if you're Amazon, unfortunately. Um, but I think what customers do want, or what our customers want, is somebody that they can phone. You know, you said it's gone down, email us. <laughs> you know, for, for me, our customers want to be able to phone their account manager, their, their service delivery manager, get hold of me, get, you know, some of our, our customers probably even have the MD's mobile number and can give him a call on a Sunday if it's gone wrong. You know, that's the sort of level of service that, that our customers want as they move this stuff into, into cloud type environments. Yeah, you know, people are realistic about the fact that technology goes wrong. It's how you deal with it and how you approach that problem. Now we talked yesterday about this, I called it the, the gap uh, between what cloud service providers are doing and what the IT shops are doing. And yeah. you guys are investing, you're, I presume yep. you're growing, right? I don't know yeah, if you, absolutely, yeah. We so just put out a press release last week about wanting to, to double our tech team to fuel future growth. So, so you're yeah. doubling. Yeah. I don't know a lot of IT shops that are doubling. I mean, there's some, but you know, some of the web guys, but, but most aren't. You know, okay. Most are flat to yeah. down. You know, yeah. Budgets are flat to down. Maybe they're up a little bit. Um, so there's this innovation gap occurring. Yeah. You guys are innovating like crazy, you're building out all kinds of management systems, you're investing in infrastructure as a service, and as I say, IT, you know, traditional IT shops can sort of you know, baseline it. Yeah. Um, now, how long can that continue? Doesn't it make sense that more and more customers are just going to put stuff into the cloud? Um, and although at the same time, it seems like with the pervasiveness of virtualization, yeah. this seems to like, Traditional IT's hanging on yeah. pretty well. Yeah. What do you see there? Is it, are we up against the dam, we holding the water back and it's just about to, to break? Or is IT catching up to you? I, I, I guess I see exactly what, what, what you said first, you know, a, a bit of both. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you're right in that there comes a point when scale becomes important and where you know, people gradually migrate to the infrastructure as a service providers and help them to innovate rather than perhaps in, in corporate IT. But people still like to have their own servers. People like to, still like to be able to run downstairs to the server room and, and reboot stuff or you know, go, go, and, go and shout at the IT guy or something. You know, pe companies like that stuff. So, you know, there, and there are still organizations that we know of that are building out their own effectively internal infrastructure as a service platforms or platforms to deliver applications to their customers. So there's still going to be a need for customers to build and run their own for some considerable future. I'm an absolute firm believer in the, the fact that the world will be hybrid for the, the, the next period, as, you know, more, more or less as far as we can see, see in advance. You know, you've still got customers out there with AS400 on premise, you know, running that sort of stuff. That technology never went away. Sam, can I, can I get a question in, sure. Dave? <laughs> yeah. okay. Of course, Ken. Oh, yeah, one Sorry. more, John. One He's more. struggling to get a word in edgeways. Anyway. <laughs> I, I taught Dave, never give up the microphone. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, you guys are investing, which is, by yeah. the way, you were the star of the panel yesterday. <laughs> You're uh, too kind, sir. Thank you. It was good. <laughs> no, it's nice to hear, but I want to get your perspective on the cloud. I mean, obviously, we've been talking about the cloud going back when we started SiliconANGLE yeah. um, in 2009. Right. There was a big promise. The whole world was running to the cloud as fast as possible. There was this huge migration, a tsunami. You could yeah. hear the footsteps, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, <laughs> where is everybody, right? So, you know, everyone's coming, but you know, a couple things happened. SSDs yeah. Um, yeah. came really on the scene quickly. Um, 
cost dropped on the hardware side, so yeah. it kind of created some on-premise innovation and, and efficiency. So yeah. people were, were doing all stuff on-prem, plus it's risky put in the cloud. Yeah. So that's all happened, but where are we now? I want to get your perspective. State of the industry, What's where are we with cloud? Obviously HP's got a couple different strategies within cloud, we'll get that in a second. You know, private cloud, hybrid cloud, then they got uh, you know, yeah. the cloud business. Um, where are we with cloud? I mean, what is it? Where? What is the state of the union for cloud from your perspective? Okay, so I guess I can only talk about the UK, um, but we're absolutely seeing an acceleration of this stuff. You know, it's taken a little while. Maybe we've been in the what, you know, what did Gartner call it, the trough of disillusionment or something like that. I love I love that expression. It's brilliant. Um, I think I think people are coming out of that. It's absolutely horses well, for courses. Well, if you're making money, that's how can delusions can you be? It's like yeah. if money's flying in the door. Our managed services business grew a thousand percent last year, so you know that that's got to be an indication yeah. of people moving in that direction. More intoxicating, less delusional. <laughs> hopefully, you know? hopefully, yeah. Yeah, but so it's growing. Some real business it's there. Definitely growing. It, you know, this this for me is is about the 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 skills and the appetite within your organisation. Um, you know, do you have the people within your organization that can drive your infrastructure forward um, and support your applications in an IT as a service manner? Or are you better concentrating on those applications and the services that you deliver to the business and letting somebody else take care of the infrastructure? And companies will come down on different sides of, of, of that argument every time. Depending we, we on the situation. Depending on the situation, yeah. depending on their skills, depending on their existing investment in technology, you know, right down to a hardware level. Um, and you know that, that's that's absolutely fine. People yeah, can do with this what's right for their business. And, yeah, yeah. and there's and no there's no cooker cutter. Yeah. There's just innovation. Absolutely. No cookie cutter. Exactly that. There's no so, there's no prescribed way well, of doing I this. Ask you a different question because sure. you mentioned UK. So we get a lar we have a large audience on SiliconANGLE. We look at the laws yeah. from London. Yeah. And, and we get a lot of traffic from in the UK. So you know cool. London's been exploding on the tech scene. Could you just yeah. share just some color around London and the tech scene there? What's it like? And and you know is it massively growing? And it's seems to be really technically built in and growing. So what's the, what's the state of, of London at this point? So I, th I think, uh, you know, we, we operate more in the, I suppose specifically the infrastructure space, of course. Um, but there does seem to be a, a, a big sort of um, upswing in things around social media and application development and that sort of thing. My little bro work, works in, in, in that, that side of the world and, and there's, there's definitely some energy there. You, there there's, there's this concept of this thing called Silicon Roundabout, which is around Old Street, sort of, you know, in, in London. Um, and the, there's, there seems to be a lot of stuff there, a lot of in, innovation. You know, it was all your web marketing companies, your, your, your design and development companies. Um, and that's, that's moving towards a sort of an app type culture and community as that, that business goes. Needless to say, all that stuff is going to drive investment in infrastructure because somewhere, some, so, some of this stuff's got to run on a server somewhere, right? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, my final question for you is, relative to some of the things you talked about on the panel yesterday, yeah. scale and scaling up with multi-tenancy was things that you kind of talked about. Yeah. What are the core things right now that need to get done in your mind's eye? Obviously your business is growing, so there's some validation there that the, the yeah. business models are changing, which we've been talking about, check that box. Um, but obviously security and some other things around multi-tenancy are always a hot topic. Yeah. Um, hybrid cloud seems to be the sweet spot as we've always talked about, the bridge to the real public cloud. What are the areas in your, uh, your mind's eye to work on for some of the uh, cloud area? So I guess the big thing for us is probably the connectivity aspect. You know, that is the bit that slows this progress down really quickly. You know, if we need to get a line for a customer um, into our data center or something like that, that can take a long time to get that sorted. That's probably the, the almost the, the most difficult bit about this stuff. You know, comms is still important. Ho hopefully, we're going to get 4G in the UK shortly. You know, it's in some cities already. Um, People need to be able to access those applications faster and faster, and that will drive, I think, more and more a centralization of IT services towards those, those points of internet presence. Okay, Sam Rutledge here inside theCUBE from SoftCAD. Welcome, welcome to theCUBE, and thanks for your Been time here. Congratulations on a great panel. Uh, Thank yes, you. Yesterday, the big HP storage announcement. Thanks for coming on. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>